It's Valley Focus, and I'm Kayla Moore Talaro, your guide for the program, as we are joined here by Eric Weinbrenner, a Phoenix resident diagnosed with ALS in 2019 and founder of Paint for a Cure. Eric, thank you very much for taking the time to be a part of the program today. As I mentioned, diagnosed with ALS back in 2019. And so uh, for people that want to kind of understand more about ALS, what sort of symptoms did you have leading up to your diagnosis? And what was your first reaction? The only symptom I had was I felt off and a little dizzy, just not feeling myself. I mentioned this to my wife and she advised me to go to the emergency room because the symptoms I had were very similar to having a stroke. When I first heard the word ALS, my reaction was that there must be a treatment out there. Once I got home and Googled the disease, my first reaction was breaking down crying, no cure, no treatments and the average life expectancy was three to five years. And ALS is a progressive neurodegenerative disease that affects nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord. So for you personally, how has ALS progressed since 2019? For the first year, I was complete pain for it. For the first year, I was completely functional. I had slight slurred speech and my strength was just as strong as before. After the first year, I started progressing rapidly, getting weaker, speech almost incomprehensible, and having issues swallowing. Within a year and a half after diagnosed, I was now confined to my wheelchair, speech 95% gone, and extremely weak. It's been a little over two years now, and I rely on caregivers to help me with everything, showering, eating, dressing, and even using the restroom, and I have completely lost my ability to talk. We're chatting here with Eric Weinbrenner, Phoenix resident, diagnosed with ALS in 2019 and founder of Paint for a Cure. So, Eric, tell the listeners today how we are communicating. Thanks to amazing technology, I'm able to communicate with an IGAS device. I recorded my voice prior to losing it completely. So what you hear is my actual recorded voice. This device follows the movement of my eyes. When I focus on a letter or word, it types it just like a keyboard, but using my eyes to hit the keys rather than my hands. I'm able to search through websites watch YouTube, browse through social media, and most importantly, communicate with others. Wow, this is impressive. Uh, I, I am very impressed by having this conversation here today, and I'm glad that this sort of technology exists. Uh, when it comes to hearing the news, though, about ALS, how important was it for you to have a great support system with family and friends? ALS is a very difficult disease to live with, and without friends and family supporting you makes it that much more challenging. Thankfully, I have an amazing support group. He's Eric Weinbrenner, Phoenix resident, diagnosed with ALS in 2019 and founder of Paint for a Cure. So let's get into this nonprofit, Paint for a Cure, that you started. You started it because you wanted to help individuals and families who cannot afford medically needed items. So for those of us that maybe don't know, what sort of items have you needed over time and how much has insurance helped or haven't helped with these costs? Not only does ALS strip away at your independence, it leaves many families in debt and often bankrupt. Unfortunately, insurance doesn't cover much needed essential items such as bathroom remodeling, foyer lifts, even wheelchair and eye gaze devices for communication. For example, I was not approved for a wheelchair for months after I was unable to walk. Thankfully, I had the means to purchase one. Most people don't have that luxury and would have to just lay in bed until approved. And insurance doesn't cover toilet risers, shower chairs, or making your bathroom medically accessible. That is an unfortunate reality that we certainly deal with. And you're trying to help, like I said, with Paint for a Cure. So how does Paint for a Cure work? 
pain for a cure helps those battling ALS that can't afford essential items to help live with this disease to be a little more comfortable. We have a website called painforacure.org and those needing help just fill out a quick questionnaire. We help those needing financial help with equipment or bathroom remodeling. You also want to be an advocate for people. So how important is it to talk with your doctor and what sort of research is being done for treatments for ALS? I'm constantly researching and asking doctors and other advocates to see if there is any new trials that look promising. Unfortunately, there's nothing new currently. There is, however, a study called NIRAM, which is spelled in U R O W N by a company called Brainstorm. Well, the good news is that this stem cell treatment has seemed to be very effective. Some people actually being able to walk again after being in a wheelchair. The unfortunate part is this treatment is stuck in phase four through the FDA. It has been being tested now for over 11 years. And those of us living with ALS just want to try and see if we're able to get out of their wheelchair and be mobile again. What do we have to lose? This disease is fatal. Sorry, but the red tape the government puts on studies frustrates the crap out of me. I should be able to try any effective treatment. He is Eric Weinbrenner, Phoenix resident, ALS conversation here and founder of Paint for a Cure. Have you found it is important to get connected with others in the community that are dealing with ALS? And how about from a family and support system perspective of connecting with other families and support units? Absolutely. The ALS community is fantastic. Thanks to social media, I've made some amazing new friends and we join together helping one another. There are many different pages on Facebook. They are all great resources for advice on equipment, medications, or just general advice about the progression of ALS. Check out my page called Paint for a Cure. And speaking of Paint for a Cure, you found Paint for a Cure in your art to be a benefit to calm your mind and be a creative outlet. So why do you encourage others to find something they are passionate about and dedicate the time to doing it? I feel everyone needs a purpose. No matter what your circumstances are, I feel that you need a purpose in life. For myself, prior to being diagnosed with ALS, my passion and purpose was helping others succeed in business. I've always enjoyed teaching people how to invest money, especially in real estate. Also, my family, of course, was my driving force. I absolutely love watching my kids grow up. I have a two-year-old daughter and a four-year-old son and a beautiful wife, which they all give me a purpose. Since diagnosed in November of 2019, I found that art was very calming and therapeutic, which helped me tremendously. Whenever I paint, I focus on the piece rather than my disease. Also diagnosed with ALS, I've changed my passion to helping others battling this disease. It makes me proud when I see the families that we help are very grateful for the financial support we are able to give them to live a little more comfortable. I'd have to think that a lot of people are proud of you as well and what you're able to do for them with Paint for a Cure as we're chatting here with Eric Weinbrenner, uh, diagnosed with ALS back in 2019 and as I've mentioned, founder of Paint for a Cure. So how can people, uh, well, I guess I should say here, is there anything else you want the community and listeners to know today about your journey and what you've learned? First off, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to share my story with everyone. The only thing I'd like to add is that anyone listening today, you or a loved one could be diagnosed with ALS just like myself. I was extremely active, energetic, fun person just like those of you listening today. I didn't even know what ALS was two years ago. So the more awareness about this disease, the better chance that there will be a cure. Also, if you would like to find out more information about my nonprofit, you can log on to paintforacure.org. 
and any funds donated go directly to families battling this disease. I thank each and every one of you for listening today, and hopefully soon there will be a cure so I can watch my kids grow up. And how can people seek assistance from Paint for a Cure? They can log on to paintforacure.org. If you're looking for assistance, there's a brief survey to be filled out. The only requirements are, of course, you must have ALS, needing financial help, and have younger kids like myself. Hopefully soon we will be able to help anyone battling this disease. And for those of you that wish to donate, Please log in to Pain for a Cure, and 100% of the proceeds will go to those families living with ALS. I've never taken a salary for running this nonprofit. I have only donated my time and money. This helps me having a purpose in life. Helping others gives me the opportunity to not dwell on my disease and redirect my thoughts and energy to something positive. I thank you all for this opportunity, and hopefully soon there will be a cure for this fatal disease. And that was my conversation with Eric Weinbrenner, Phoenix resident diagnosed with ALS in 2019 and founder of Paint for a Cure. Greatly appreciate Eric's time and certainly happy to be able to spread the word about Paint for a Cure. For more information, you can turn to paintforacure.org as you have been listening right here to Valley Focus.